All right, so I'm gonna show you a few of my techniques for how I light my scenes. So we're gonna go through three different pieces. I'll just put them up on the screen here. Um, so yeah, the first one is this kind of temple one. The next one's gonna be this outdoor, like sunlight environment. Then the last one is this sci-fi kind of thing. I'll show you how I uh, did the lighting, exactly what I did for each one. Um, and it's all like really simple, um, simple techniques. And hopefully you'll see that lighting, it can it doesn't have to be very complicated. You can can get by with just like usually I'll show you here like one light in the whole scene um, so yeah let's let's do this so I have this uh, file open here so I just moved all the lights that I'm using into this one collection here so um, if I just isolate this you can see these are all the lights that are actually coming in from the left side here there is like there's one more thing in the middle here but it's not this, this isn't really doing anything if I just hide all these you can see it's, there's just this one thing in the middle. So yeah, if I take these, just isolate them, you can see there's this one here, uh, just this one million watt light bulb right here that's doing pretty much all the heavy lifting. This extra stuff is kind of useless. Uh, let's actually turn this off. Um, so you can see this one right here is just doing like basically nothing. This one is doing again like a little bit, but basically nothing. And then this one is doing a lot here. Um, so if I if I deleted all of the lights in the scene except for this one here, it would basically look 99% as good. And that's the way I like to approach this, is you add one light in here, and you just move it around into... Um, you just try to, a bunch of different angles and locations for it, and find one that works with the scene that you're using, and one that just hits the hardest. Yeah, so let me show you exactly how I would have done this. So I'll just hide all these and add a new one. So let's say you're working on your scene here um, and you've got like some sort of idea here and then you want to light it and it looks something like this. You have, maybe it's all black, maybe it's like just one little thing in the corner or whatever. So at this stage, I would just add, um, so in this case, I ended up with a spotlight, but um, so let's just add this in. I'll just crank it up to something crazy and then I'll just start moving it around into different places and kind of just play around with it and see what might work here. So you can see, this is kind of the angle that I chose for the final one, but you just kind of, I like to keep um, the, the rendered view from the camera's point of view so that I can see what the actual image is gonna look like as I'm moving this around. So I'll just put it there. Um, and yeah, you just move, move this around and, and find different um, angles that might work. One thing that makes it easier is if you set your uh, your pivot point here to the 3D cursor, and then just put this put the cursor around like the middle of your image. Now you can just rotate the light around like this, and um, it makes it just really easy to try different angles. So something like that might be kind of cool too. So you can see there's a lot of different options we could go with here, um, and it's just about finding the one that works best with the the like the scene that you're working with. So yeah, there's something else that could uh, might be cool. Maybe let's add another zero in here. Um, and yeah, so that's, there's really not much more to it than that. Like these other lights that I added in here, um, I kind of just duplicated the main one and then lowered this uh, intensity down a bit. But um, if you're gonna do that, just make sure they're all pointing in the same sort of direction so it looks like they're coming from the same light source, from the same thing. But um, yeah, that's it for that one. One other thing that's important here is having volumetrics, so or having a volume here. So you can see this is just, if I go to the shader editor, I just put a cube over the entire scene here and I just put a volume scatter um, in there. All right, so the next one here is gonna be this piece. So um, this one's even more simple than the last one. Basically, we're just using the sky texture from, uh, from Blender. You can also just use a sun lamp. So what we're doing here is, um, if I take this out, it's just pure black. Um, there is a sky that I added in the back here. I'll show you how I did that. Um, so together, it's this is the final piece. So let's just uh, I'm just gonna hide the sky here and and just go through this. So the way you do this is by default you're gonna have a background in here, right? So this is gonna be it's gonna be something like that. All you have to do is just take that out, search for sky texture, and just add that in. If you don't, if you're in a different software and you don't have this, 
Um, just a, a sun lamp will work the same. Okay, so yeah, what you do here is you just add this in and then um, you can tweak the elevation and rotation from here. So yeah, same thing as last time, just play with different angles and find something that works for the scene that you're working with here. And yeah, one thing I like to do here is you can see in the final one, the angle of the sun is sort of coming from the side um, of the scene. So that just gives it some nice interesting shadows rather than if the sun's pointed, uh, like if it's coming from behind the camera um, or right in front of the camera, everything's going to be kind of silhouetted. So if it's coming from the side, I, I usually like that just to create nice shadows on everything. So one more thing you can do here uh, when you're using a sun lamp or the sky texture here is if you add an image plane in the back of the scene that just has a picture of a nice sky on it. Um, it's kind of like a substitute for an HDRI, but I'd like to use this because it just gives me a bit more control. So what this is, is um, just a giant plane that I chucked way in the back. Uh, just a principal shader here. And then um, there's just an image of a sky. This is from Unsplash. And then it's just running into the emission color here. And it's also running into the base color. So it's reflecting a bit of light from the color of the sky texture. But then it's also emitting a bit of its own light uh, just based on the colors of this image here. If you don't want to do that, you can also just run it straight into an emission node and then run that out. Uh, that, that can work just as well. Yeah, and then just add that into your scene. And that's how you get really natural, realistic looking skies is because you're using a picture of an actual sky. Okay, so here's the last one I wanna show you. Um, so in, in sci-fi scenes like this, this is where things can get a little bit trickier with lighting. So in a lot of sci-fi scenes like this, it's really easy to like end up with just a bunch of different lights in your scene and it gets really chaotic and it's, it's hard to like have um, a focal point of your scene because everything is just bright and neon and glowing all over the place. So, if you can try to use the same tips as last time, it's like, as you know, try to minimize the amount of light sources uh, that you have. That is one of the best ways that I found to just kind of clean that up and make it easy to look at. So you can see here, if I hide all the lights here, um, there's a few extra random emission, like vending machine things in here. Um, but these aren't really like casting a lot of light onto things. They're not super bright. So I, I don't think there's really a problem here. So. Let's just go through this uh, one by one. So the main thing here is this neon sign in the front. So it's just um, a couple of emissive planes here. Okay, so let's look at these things right here. If I just isolate this, um, you can see it's just a couple of uh, planes here. And then this is just some random image I downloaded from like Unsplash, uh, same with this one. So then what's happening is I'm just taking that image that I downloaded here, running it into the emission color here, but we're doing some stuff in between. So the main one is this red one down here. Um, so it's just going to this, this, uh, here, this, this one. So this is just running into this curves node here. It's just making it a bit brighter, um, just to kind of give it a more like blown out kind of look. And then that's running into this hue saturation node here. So it's running into the value socket here on this node. So that means any color that I pick at the bottom, um, the entire image is just gonna be that color. And then the value here is gonna determine which parts are bright and which parts are dark. Um, so if I just look at the signs here, it just looks like this. It's just, yeah. And then that's just running into the emission color and the strength is turned up pretty high on this one. The one above it here, you can see I'm doing the same thing, just running it into, um, it's just other image and it's running into, uh, this one is just making it blue. But the interesting thing here is that if we look at the strength here, this one is at 66 and this one's at uh, one tenth of that. So what happens when you when you start adding a bunch of um, like colorful lights in your scene that are all really bright, like if I turn this up, um, it looks cool, but it's, it's just a bit too much for me. Um, so I think when you start having a bunch of lights in your scene that are all really bright and they're like multiple different intense colors, it's really easy to for those to kind of clash and it just gets really messy really fast. So you can have those different colors, but I like to just keep that a bit more um, subtle on the second one so that I just wanted one main kind of light here to uh, one main color. So yeah, if I hide those, um, 
again, it's just all black except for there's just one light in the back, which I'll show you. Uh, just one point light, which is. So yeah, there's just this one point light over here. Try not to worry too much about the actual uh, values, uh, like of the intensity of the lights, because it's, it's going to change so much depending on uh, like different scenes and how big things are and how far away it is. But it's uh, this bright right here. If you can just see that, not doing a ton, but it's just um, kind of balancing things out a little bit in the back. So if I get rid of that, you can see um, it's not doing a ton, but it just kind of fills in some empty space in the back there. Okay, so I think that's everything I wanted to show you. So hopefully that kind of shows how um, lighting doesn't have to be super complicated. If you just kind of find the right place to put things in, um, you don't have to do too much else. Other than that, um, yeah, follow me on Instagram. Subscribe if you want. Peace.